Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter where you live, what kind of car you drive, what kind of job you have. It doesn't matter if you pay $20,000 a year in tuition for your kid to go to the best high school. We have to be diligent because no matter what we think, how we think, how perfect our lives are, none of that matters because this drug, it doesn't discriminate. It, it comes in um, very quietly and very seductively and ruins people's lives without them even seeing it coming. Where the danger comes in, I think, for a lot of addicted substances is they actually can cause changes in the brain. Your brain is still evolving up until your mid-20s. So the younger someone is, the more likely it is they're going to have an effect on their brain and be um, more severely addicted down the line and have a harder time quitting. As hard as it is, you know, some people just think, oh, they're too young for this, they're too young. It's out there. It's out there. They've got to know. And it's just so easy for them to, um, to stumble upon it. They could be at a friend's house and it could be there. It's getting younger and younger when you have to talk to them. I feel like with uh, kind of each successive generation, the kids are getting a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. And when you have these bigger, stronger bodies that are better trained and moving faster and moving harder, uh, it seems like extremities, elbows, shoulders, knees, ankles, uh, they, we seem to be picking up more frequent injuries in these areas. There is a difference from mid-school to high school, and it's because of developmental. So in mid-school, you are still developing your bones, you're still, develop, you're still growing. Going. The injuries are different and the treatment of the injuries are different. The, you can still have a broken femur or a broken radius or a broken ulna, whatever, break your bone. Why they're different is because in mid-school they still have their growth plate growing and those, those cells at the growth plate need to be protected. It's important for, for anyone who's working with a middle school age kid to realize that there are, there are great differences in, in maturity curves that kids are going to be on. I was uh, playing for my middle school, seventh grade. I hurt my left knee. I had my uh, cyst, and I tore a bit of my meniscus, and I had to have surgery, and I didn't play for the whole season. I think most pediatricians uh, and emergency room physicians feel that for younger kids, uh, there are studies that show that um, non-opioids like Tylenol and ibuprofen work as well as opiates. So again, there's going to be this emphasis on using non-opiate uh, medications. But frankly, that should also be the case for older kids. It's just as dangerous for mid-schoolers as it is for high schoolers because their brains are developing in all of those cases. They are all at risk of developing an addiction or a substance use disorder if they're exposed to these medications early on. And they're all mid-schoolers and high schoolers both highly likely to experiment um, or misuse these medications if they have access to them. In my opinion, parents with mid-school children who have an injury should deal with it um, as a proactive. They should make sure that it's protected, make sure that it's going to heal, and give minimal intervention for pain. Because a lot of pain can be treated with just positioning, putting it up, putting ice on it, putting heat on it, at night resting it. Like when, if you sprain your ankle, if you put it up at night and you wrap it, the swelling will go down and the pain will go down. So I honestly just did some at-home remedies. I did a TENS unit for my back. So every night, or I'd ice, I'd use heat, just stuff like that, easy stuff. And then when it did start getting bad, I went to the chiropractor. Some girls did yoga, they went to chiropractors, which I did too, but in the end, I just needed rest, honestly. I had boys in wrestling and in football. If they're injured, talk to them about what what's bothering them, what hurts, where it's at, and then make a decision from there that you're gonna seek alternative medicine. Kinesio tape is great, physical therapists can do that, so a physical therapist seeing somebody like that, a chiropractor, um, cold therapy, hot therapy, hot tub swimming, there's just more out there than going to a, a regular doctor and getting pills. 
pain does guide you when you have an injury because it tells you the location, it tells you the severity, you're going to be able to feel it. In sports injuries, you'd want to know if that injury is worse. And if you're masking that pain with opioids, there's really no way to know. As it mends, the pain will decrease. And so it's going to tell me that it's healing. Let's say you give the child strong medications for the, for the broken bone. She won't know if it's healing or not because she doesn't feel the pain. And so it's, pain is a, is a life saver. And a little pain won't hurt you. I think, I think sometimes we want our society to be pain free. I think we as consumers are, are partially to blame for this, this problem because, you know, we want a quick fix. We don't want to have to go to, to physical therapy. We want our pain to go away, whether it's emotional pain or physical pain. We want a pill, a magic pill, that's going to take all that away. And that's what our kids see, and that's what our kids want too. They want the magic bullet, and sometimes that can lead to life altering and sometimes um, death. No matter what school they go to, no matter what extracurricular activities they're involved in, they're going to get offered things and they're going to have exposure to it and their friends are going to be doing it. The kids know way more about this stuff than we do. And the odds of us finding out as much as they know is, is very small. And so if we can have that conversation with them and, and tell them, you know, I know you're going to be faced with challenging choices. I know you're going to be faced with things starting in middle school that you're going to have to make some tough choices, and I would like to be part of that conversation with you. Please. 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 Think about this. Talk about this. With your children. With your children. Your children.